Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Burness, and this is the fourth video in our PCS series. In the last video, we talked about smooth pursuit movements, and we introduced the idea of corrective eye movements called refixation saccades that allow us to find the target again if our pursuits fail. But saccades are important for more than just corrections. They're used any time our eyes move to a new target. We actually use saccades more than any other type of eye movement. We use them repeatedly when we read. We use rightward saccades as our eyes are moving from one word to the next in a sentence. And then a bigger left and slightly downward saccade to start the next line of text on the page. Here are the eyes of a normal person as they saccade to a target that's appearing in different locations along a horizontal line directly in front of them. These movements are ideally quick and accurate. Normally our eyes can saccade to a target anywhere in your visual field in a tenth of a second or less. There are many different types of saccades, but for our purposes we'll just talk about two of them, reflexive and volitional saccades. Reflexive saccades happen when your eyes look at something new that's appeared in your peripheral vision, or if you hear something that causes you to look. They're largely unconscious, originating lower down in the brainstem. Uh, they happen mostly automatically, but they can be overridden, or as neurologists like to say, inhibited by higher cortical areas of the brain. That means a healthy brain can choose to ignore something new in the periphery and maintain focus on something else in front of them. This concept of being able to inhibit reflexive eye movements is important, and we're going to come back to it later in another video. Volitional saccades are under your conscious control, like when you're reading words on a page, or if you're scanning an area looking for something, or just taking in your environment. They're largely driven from the frontal lobes of the brain. The brain uses these saccadic eye movements to create a constantly updated, unconscious, collicular map of where you are in relation to your environment. And then we use this unconscious information all day long to do things like accurately reach for objects, to balance, and to avoid obstacles as we move. If your saccades are inaccurate, you can get lost on the page when you're reading, which can seriously affect your abilities at school or work. Your brain's map of where you are relative to your surroundings will be wrong too, so you may find yourself being clumsy or bumping into things. The mechanics of generating these eye movements are complex, and brain injuries can have a number of effects on the quality of our saccades. We can examine saccadic eye movements in our PCS patients to find out how fast and accurate they are. Quite often, they'll be bad in one direction, but fine in another, and this can help us to determine which areas of the brain have been injured. We can also repeat these measurements after treatment to see if the patient is improving. Frontal lobe injuries can result in slow or late saccades, while cerebellar or brainstem injuries can cause saccades to be inaccurate, falling short or sometimes even going past their targets. Reading can be difficult and tiring as your eyes will have to make lots of extra and often inaccurate corrective movements to try and find the next words on the page. In order to free yourself from these problems, you have to carefully drive plasticity in the injured brain pathways where the function's been lost. This is best done indirectly at first, and then directly once the function improves a bit. Depending on the type of dysfunction present, different types of exercises and stimulations can be used. Generally, you can't use volitional saccades to improve inaccurate saccades, at least in the beginning. This is why people with PCS who have reading difficulties usually can't improve their situation simply by trying to read more. But sometimes reflexive saccades can be used to improve volitional saccades, and vice versa. Sometimes even using pursuits can improve saccades. It all depends on the specifics of the injury. This is why every patient must be examined before we can know what the best technique might be. So once again, we see that brain injuries affecting pathways controlling specific eye movements can drive many of the disabling symptoms of PCS. So that's it for this one. In the next video, we'll discuss why being in busy visual environments like shopping malls and grocery stores can drive anxiety for many people with PCS. So thanks for watching.